click the bell icon to get latest videos from ekida hello friends and today's topic is a representation of poles and zeros in s domain s domain means in laplace domain whenever any function is given then that function consists two numbers basically two parts first one is zeros of that function and another one is poles of that function much more important is poles basically poles decides the stability of function and the zeros are useful in filters or finding the which type of filter that function shows or function is so right now important one is what is poles and what is zeros basically poles are always placed in the denominator whereas zeros are always placed in the numerator so first of all what is important how to find out poles or zeros of any function or any signal basically for that we need to study a definition of it then you can understand how to find out the poles or how to find out the zeros of given signal or function so let's move on to definition first so the definition first of all of zero basically if you have any function and if it is present or represented in an equation format then you just try to solve or try to find out the roots of that equation and whenever you find the roots then of course in that root we have some polynomial values suppose if your equation is s square plus 5 s plus 6 then of course its roots will be s plus 3 and s plus 2 then the 3 and 2 are the polynomials now important one is how to find out the zeros and poles using a polynomial value so first of all what is important the definition so let's go through the definition first now look at here in the definition what is important if the value of s is equal to polynomial means what i said i have given one equation s square plus 5 s plus 6 in that my roots are s plus 3 and s plus 2 if any one of the root let's say s plus 5 in s plus 5 the s value is equal to polynomial value 5 in s plus 5 if the my s value is equal to polynomial value means if my s value is minus 5 then your polynomial value will be is 5 now if i add both the values then what will be the outcome it is 0 now look at here now in one term we have s plus 5 in another bracket we have s plus 2 now just equate that s plus 5 equal to 0 what you will get s equals to minus 5 now substitute minus 5 or replace s by minus 5 so in bracket what we have s plus 5 if that s is replaced by minus 5 then what you will get the term become 0 now whenever we write the equation then the roots always present in a product form i'll show you by equation first suppose if we have a function then the roots of this function is first one is s plus 3 another one is s plus 2 now if Equate this s plus three equal to zero. Then what you will get s equals to minus three. Now if I replace this minus three, if I replace this s by minus three, then whole bracket becomes zero. And if if I multiply this zero with this part, then what you will get? The answer becomes zero. Means what? The function or signal value becomes zero. So remember. if the value of s is equal to any one of the polynomial root of numerator polynomial now suppose let's assume this is the equation of numerator and right now i have calculated the roots of that equation now if the value of s is equal to any one of the root means if s value is equal to minus 3 then the signal or function will become zero as i told you if i substitute or if i replace this s this s by minus 3 then whole product this whole bracket will gives a zero value and if after multiplying it the whole function value becomes zero then the roots of numerator polynomial means this roots of 
numerator polynomial numerator means whenever I'll, I'll take you i'll take the one example in that you can understand where the numerator when you have to calculate numerator polynomial and the denominator polynomial but for time just consider for a sec just consider this is the numerator equation so therefore the roots of numerator polynomial are called as zeros of that signal or function means these roots are nothing but the zeros or therefore these roots are called zeros of signal or a function now similarly we'll find out we'll study the definition of poles and we'll find out the how to obtain the poles of that function now we'll study the definition of poles basically definition of poles is a little bit simple and similar to zeros we have to do the same thing suppose if one equation is given in a denominator or in a function let's say the function denominator is we'll take the same example and let's assume this is this equation is given in denominator now right now my function is 1 upon s square plus 5 s plus 6 now we'll do the same thing we'll find out the roots of this function the roots of this function becomes you can say that s plus 3 and s plus 2 now do the one thing just replace or just equate this bracket s plus 3 equal to 0 if i equate this s plus 3 equal to 0 then what you will get your s value becomes minus 3 and now substitute this s value in this part now if i substitute s equal to minus 3 in this part then what we'll get minus 3 plus 3 becomes 0 then this result of this bracket becomes 0 now multiply 0 with the denominator term which will give us a 0 means what what you will get 1 upon 0 and now you have you should know 1 upon 0 is always infinity so from using this concept you are you should be able to write the definition of poles of this function now the basically the definition is if the value of s is equal to any one of the roots of denominator polynomial look at here i'll tell you if the value of s is equal to roots of denominator polynomial these are the roots of this equation and 3 and 2 are the polynomials now if this s value is equal to polynomial then what will happen then function becomes infinite so this hill function will gives us infinite value then this roots polynomial are called as poles of that function or a signal look at it therefore the roots of denominator polynomial are called as poles of that signal or function so what is important first of all in case of zeros first of all try to obtain the roots of given equation similar with the do the same thing with this de denominator one also to find out the poles now once you get the pole just equate with the zeros just equate that whole bracket equal to zero once you equate it then try to find out the value of s now in case of numerator if you are equating with a zero then you will get some s value that s value is nothing but uh, zeros of that function whereas in case of denominator do the same thing equate that bracket be equal to zero and wh whatever value of s you will get it is nothing but the poles of that function now we will learn how to find out the poles and zeros of given function in the next upcoming videos so thank you for watching this video stay tuned with ekeda and subscribe ekeda to study or to learn how to find out poles and zeros of the functions thank you so much